welcome to the unit on applications of surface embellishment. This unit you will learn to develop surface embellishments on fashion and apparel products from inspirational sources. This unit comprises of 6 modules and a final review session that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit students will be able to define the meaning of concepts, translate the details from inspirational source to paper, list the alternative non-fabric medium and materials, simulate the patterns and textures of sources of inspiration on paper using appropriate medium and techniques, select appropriate material and combination of techniques keeping in mind the look and quality parameters for translation on textiles, analyze the advantages and limitations of using a particular technique over other methods. List the repeat patterns in textiles. Define the meaning of layouts and explore layouts on different fashion and apparel products. The first module defines the meaning of concepts and explain how to translate details from the source of inspiration to paper. A concept is a mental representation which the brain uses to denote a class of things in the world. This is to say that it is literally a symbol or group of symbols together made from physical material of the brain. The concepts are mental representations that allow us to draw appropriate interface about the type of entities we encounter in our daily lives. Concepts do not em encompass all mental representations but are merely a subset of them. The use of concepts is necessary to process such as categorization, memory, decision making, learning and interface. Everything starts an idea. Some ideas are minor and not worth much effort to accomplish. Some ideas are so important that generations have not been able to accomplish them. The concept is the most important part of the design process. All that follows is directed by and must answer to the concept. The result are only as good as the ideas that originate them. Form is where you give form to your concept and the work gets done. This is the physical part of the design process. Only when the form meets the expectations of the concept, the process is successful. The content is checked throughout the designing. Each step of the doing or making must validate the concept. If the process strays and the result are at odds with the concept, the form must be modified or the project may fail. If the process inspires the designer to a new or better idea, the concept can be modified. In most designs, there is a continual give and take between the concept and the form. Which one gives depends on the situation. Sometimes the concept is so specific that it cannot be changed. At other times, a better idea is found along the way and the concept is changed to take advantage of the new discovery. The design concept is the idea behind the design. It's how you plan on solving the design problem in front of you. Your design concept becomes the framework for all your design decisions. This module explains how to create patterns and textures using different mediums and techniques on paper. Once concepts are created in mind, form the source of inspiration, the concepts are to be transferred on the paper. The concept starts talking a form at this stage. The idea on the method to be adopted or designed are to be rendered on paper to depict the final look of the fabric embellishment. Rendering is to be done using appropriate mediums and materials to show the overall appearance of the work. The rendering has to effectively show the aesthetics appeal of the embellishment on the final look of the work. So the medium has to be 
chosen wisely. The third module lists materials that are required and the techniques that can be selected for translation on textiles. Fabric representation is an important entity of fashion illustration. Understanding the textures and properties of different fabric and embellishment materials and how to render these accurately can add authenticity to a illustration. This section will be focused on the alternative and non-fabric mediums and materials. The following materials can be used to effectively to render the surface ornaments, fabrics. Certain materials can be used while rendering to achieve a realistic look. Cartridge paper, pastel paper, tracing paper, watercolor paper, cards, pencils, rendering from 9H to 9B, color, colored pencils, paper stamps, eraser, sharpener, graphic sticks, water soluble and color pencils, charcoal, soft or oil pastels, ink, paint, watercolor or acrylic, fine linen pens, felt tip pens, metallic paints, glitter pens, beads, sequins, threads, woolen yarns, texture describing the tactile quality of a foam. Accurate rendering of an object texture is the key to every realistic drawing. The textures of some objects can be particularly challenging due to movement, fine detail or their ethereal quality. The texture in a drawing is also a product of the support such as paper or, or canvas, some papers, particularly those for pastel and watercolor, have a textured surface due to the fibers or the mold uses to make the paper. Different mediums will show up the in inherent texture or in the paper. Now let's move on to the learn how to simulate the patterns and textures of the source of inspiration on paper using appropriate medium and techniques. As well as creating the illusion of textures in drawing, artists often use the inherent qualities of medium combined with various forms of mark making such as rough shading, smooth blending, hatching or scrambling to create a interest within the image. Appropriate mediums are to be used to create illusions of beads, threads, wool, silk or wooden texture along with the appropriate rendering of ground fabric. As mentioned of the embellishment methods are to be depicted on paper using specific rendering techniques to achieve the required look and feel of the work. Every medium may not necessarily be applied to render all the methods each embellishment gives a different types of texture. Few have a smooth finish whereas few give a rough appearance. Materials such as glass beads will have a glossy finish which are to be rendered with lead pencils. Lace fabric can be rendered with mesh fabric and pencil. Metal parts can be rendered using gel pens, metallic and pearl paints. While working out the design on actual fabric, various combinations of techniques can be used to bring out the manipulated look at the fabric. Pleasing aesthetic appeal can be created via wise usage of combinations. Suitable materials are to be incorporated in the design for the successful final output. A designer can be experiment unconventional methods and combination to add value to the product. One of the conventional combination created as an example is creating quilts with kanta embroidery worked out on it. Unconventionally, quilting can be combined with other techniques. Quilt embellishments can take many forms but the most common are beaded embellishment. Including beaded finger or beaded trim, found objects, metal and foil and swing embellishments such as trims and silk ribbons. Extreme fabric embellishing involves sewing embellishments on fabric or closely 
that often the fabric cannot be seen. At least in some areas, objects are more than just a way to hold the piece of your quilt together. Stitching lines, swirls and motifs add dimension, depth, meaning and interest. Another technique is to combine patchwork and applique or patchwork with quilting. Many other combinations can be tried out to create interesting outcomes. Also keep in mind the quality of the fabric and the embellishment materials that are to be used on the fabric. The embellishment material has to satisfy the quality parameters of the fabric and other requirements as well. This module is a repeat patterns that are used in textiles. A motif. It is an element of a pattern, image or part of one or theme. It may be repeated in a design or composition often many times or may just occur once in a work. It may be an element in the iconography of a particular subject or type of subjects that is seen in other works. Ornamental or decorative art can usually be analyzed into a number of different elements which can be called motifs. These may often as in textiles art be repeated many times in a pattern. Repeat patterns are also known as translation patterns and are elements where the motif is simply repeated over and over again along a horizontal or vertical line. These elements normally repeat in a predictable manner. A repeat pattern is the area of an image that repeats along vertically and horizontally and where one section flows into the next. It is a design which has been done more than once in an area. Types of repeat patterns includes mirror repeat where patterns are reversed. Sometimes in mirror repeats, sports repeats where the fabric appears to give random effects of the pattern. Ornamentation of fabric with the help of prints and stripes inherent on fabric or with the help of superficial adherence has evolved over the ages. This generally forms the grooming up of the art of design. Different kinds of prints or patterns are used to evolve a design pattern. These are the different kinds of motifs. Prints such as the bandage, batik, paisley, chitons, Egyptian, Persian, French, provincials and other country prints evolving from folklore and influences with traditional costumes are termed as ethnic prints. These motifs are also known as natural motifs. They basically depict inspiration derived from nature such as flowers, animals, landscapes and similar inspirations. The use of geometrical figures such as dots, stripes, both horizontal and vertical with other geometrical motifs and their combinations are termed as geometrical patterns. Abstract ideas that are used to depict the unknown have always caught the fancy of people and are often used for design based ornamentation. It is an abstract floral pattern that has stylized depiction of flowers. It is a very common motif used for textiles. Such motifs are repeated in various arrangements called patterns. The common type of patterns used are block repeat and brick variations. A block repeat. A block repeat is a layout in which the repeating unit appears directly on a horizontal line to the left or right of the original design unit. They are also called square repeat, straight across repeat and straight repeat. Block repeat. Patterns is formal, organized and symmetrical. Images are snapped to a grid and perfectly aligned both vertical and horizontally. For this type, the motif contained within a square or rectangle is repeated in straight lines across the down. The design can be spaced with the background completely separating the motif or motifs or packed up connected together. 
there are very simple variations to the basic block repeat that add interest and flow. Overlapping the repeat unit, flipping alternating motifs or making it continuous. Think flowers connected by sinewy vines might be all that's needed to make a pleasing design. Diamonds and ogies are considered subtypes of the block repeat. There are two types of draw patterns, full drop repeat and half drop repeat. The simplest of the draw patterns is the full drop. In this pattern, motifs are repeated along the horizontal and vertical axis. This is the most common type of patterned fabric. The pattern is the same on the both sides of the fabric roll and aligns perfectly when side matched. The repeat of the motifs is staggered by 50% by row or by column. Each unit of pattern is designed to match halfway down another unit of pattern. A half drop fabric usually has large pattern. The pattern doesn't match exactly on each side of the fabric roll and matches half a drop down instead. Brick repeat. Brick repeat pattern is similar to block except instead of being perfectly aligned vertically and horizontally, the image layout is staggered like a brick wall. Meanwhile, on to the brick repeat, which is similar to a half drop repeat. One rotated 90 degree produce the other. The main differences is the brick is repeated forms a horizontal emphasis, while the half drop forms a vertical one. It can also affect two dimensional patterns by creating diagonal movement which can be emphasized or subdued using color and tonal effects that are visually linked to the particular elements in the repeat. The most common variations is the striped horizontal mirror which creates directional changes as the eye moves over the pattern. If the grid structure is used as an element within the design, it creates a more stable and solid pattern when repeated. Various types of embellishments, be it be embroidery, applique, quilt, patch or any other form can be worked out on textiles in the form of motifs which is the most basic form of design. These can be repeated over and over again in various repeat patterns and can be produced all over the fabric in specific layouts. This module explores layouts on different fashion and apparel products. Textile design types may be categorized by layout as well as by motifs or style of pattern. The term layout refers to the assignment of motifs in the framework of the design plane. Unlike a painting or drawing which is designed in relation to the boundaries the elements in a textile design are designed in relation only to each other. There are no boundaries when the pattern is printed. It will continue over yards and yards of clothes. For a textile design to be reproduced on fabric, it must eventually be developed into on standard unit containing a specific arrangement of the desired motifs. This one unit called a repeat will be repeated across the width and length of the fabric in a continuous manner. Any specific motif will require on the fabric at measured intervals because each motif holds a specific location within the repeat unit. The entire unit is printed over, the, over and over again above itself, below itself and beside itself thus covering the fabric. Within the repeat unit itself, however, the motifs may be of any density and variety of density is both more natural and more dynamic. Within the repeat unit, the motifs do not need to be evenly spaced. Whether close together or far apart, they must have a consistent relationship to each other. When the design unit is continued over the fabric, one motif or space viewed as distinct from all the other will look like a mistake. It is the subtle difference in motifs and spacing that will make the design interesting. 
This module explains how to apply a surface embellishment technique conceived on fashion and apparel products. These are the different fabric layouts, tossed layout, packed layout, all over layout, floral layout, bucket layout, ogi layout, boedry layout, border layout, engineered layout, one way layout, two way layout, multi-direction layout. We will learn about each of these now. Toast layout. Toast layout is a design in which elements are scattered randomly within the unit of ribbon. They are also called as random layout. A pattern composed of motifs that do not recur at regular measured intervals within one repeat unit of the design is referred to as a toast pattern. These elements may be spaced with ground area between motifs. Packed layout. Packed layout is similar to tossed layout, but the motifs are packed close together so that they touch. They are not separated by ground area. An all over layout. An all over layout has balanced motifs that require irregularly within a repeat unit. The difference is that the motifs are connected in some way that forms a network that covers the entire design plane. These designs feature elaborate embellished floral like motifs that seem to glow and wander across the design plane. Floral layout is it is a small scale pattern with basic block repeat also called a set pattern or a tailored pattern. Originally, the term floral referred to a soft, lightweight silk cloth. Classic florals are small scale, regular shaped geometrics, usually in set layout. Flower or plant. Flower or plant can be arranged in what is called a bouquet layout. With identical or varying bouquet are usually repeating at regular intervals. A five point bouquet is a layout arranged so that when the fabric is cut to cover a sofa cushion, one bouquet is in the center of the quarter of a bouquet show at each corner of the cushion. A once popular format rarely uses today, except in wallpapers and traditional damask patterns, is the ogi layout, which utilizes onion shaped motifs. This type of pattern almost always features floral forms on urns or vases. It also features birds as motifs. A horizontal stripe. A horizontal stripe layout is called a bayadere. This needs not simply a geometrical stripe composed of straight lines, but may feature any type of motif arranged in a horizontal format. While a bayadere is possible with any type of printing. Vertical stripe layouts are not possible in flatbed screen printing due to the difficulty of matching up the stripes from the screen to another during printing. Diagonal stripes common in home furnishing are almost always at 45 degree angle, not only for ease in matching the design at the seams but also for use either horizontally or vertically. The diagonal usually runs from lower left to the upper right. In this layout, a border pattern is focused along one selvage with the ground extending to other selvage. A border fabric is used for garments or draperies with a border around the hem. Therefore, enough space must be allowed in the design for the hem of the skirt or dress to be turned under without distorting the design. Some home furnishing fabrics are designed with a border along each selvage with the ground in between, forming in essence of double border. When one screen makes the entire completely self-contained pattern, it is referred to an engineered pattern, designed almost like a drawing or painting. Engineered patterns are striking in pillowcases, towels, rugs and scarves. In any type of layout where it is engineered, ogi or bokeh, the directional of the motifs must consider. In one way pattern, 
all the motifs face upright in the same direction. In a two way pattern half the motifs face upright and half upside down so that the pattern gives the same feeling in the either vertical direction. Fabric printed with one way or two way patterns however must always be utilized in consistent direction. In a multi directional pattern where motifs face all direction the pattern looks correct from any angle. Pieces of fabric can be used together in any way and therefore the pattern is essentially non directional. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize in this unit you have learned the meaning of concepts. You learned how to translate the detail from inspirational sources to paper and different mediums and materials that are used in embellished surfaces. You also learned how to stimulate the patterns and textures of the source of inspiration on paper using the appropriate mediums and techniques and how to select appropriate materials and combine techniques keeping in mind the look and quality parameters for translation on textiles. You learned about the techniques of repeating patterns in textiles. The section on layouts examined and the meaning of layouts and explored the various layouts on different fashion and apparel products. Thank you.